Welcome back to P2. Today we're looking at factorial notation, unit 4.2. So factorial notation is something where you may or may not have seen it. I don't think you've seen it before, but uh, it looks like this. N will be a number and you get this exclamation mark afterwards. And this is N factorial. So for example, three factorial is how you say this and what it means is 3 times 2 times 1 and that's what you would work out. If I look at another number say 5 factorial that's 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 and this is also then a button on my calculator. So to find the factorial button you're looking for x with your exclamation mark. Now, on your my calculator, uh, the Classio class with 991, it is above this button. So I would need to do shift and the x to the minus one button. Uh, and it's just below the x squared button. On the slightly older Casio calculators, it's still above the same button. So it's still above the X to the minus one button, so shift in that. However, you find this one, rather than being roughly in the middle, you'll find this one at near the top right, near the log button. Okay, but you're just looking for this X with an exclamation mark. So you put the number in, the exclamation mark, press equals, and you'll get this answer. Now, you're probably thinking, why am I showing you this? Well, it's simple. This is what's going to help us be able to find those constants, those uh, coefficients of our expanded brackets. So essentially, the values that come in Pascal's triangle. And we get it quite simply. And I'm going to show you just a few more little bits now. So n are like this. So n will be essentially when we've got our bracket raised to a power like this one five this is going to be our value of n okay so if i've got it to the raised power five my n is going to be five i've got to raise to the power three my n is going to be three and so on and then r will be the position where it is within that expansion so if we're thinking about an example you know, when r is 0, that would be my first term, r is 1 is my second term, r is 2 is my third term, and so on within that uh, sequence. But it becomes very straightforward, kind of the, the first and the last term we know is going to have the coefficient of 1, so we often then skip those when we're doing it, and we do our kind of r is 1 all the way up to r minus 1, essentially, as those n values are always going to be just the value one. But I guess I'll come into a bit more detail on that when we start looking at it a little bit more in the next video. But for now, let's just talk about a few bits within this. So NR is quite important. You'll see that used a lot, that notation. And what this will also translate into is this notation here. So this we say as N choose R. And this is also going to be a button on your calculator that we will be using a lot in the next video. Okay, I'll just give you where that button is now, just so that you're aware. But it's, uh, it's basically shift and the divide sign on pretty much, well, all Casios anyway, uh, looks like NCR like that. Okay, so that's a really good button. That's a button you're going to use a lot in this. And as I said, we'll be going into a lot more detail on that next video of how we use it to expand um, kind of any bracket raised to a positive power. Now today what we're actually going to go through is how this button works, like what it's actually doing behind the scenes. And this is something that you kind of you need to know you wouldn't use it all the time, 
but you will be using it a bit within questions. So there are sometimes parts of a question where you would use this. The majority of the time though, you will be using this button on the calculator for your expansions, but there will be a few cases where you'll need to know how to break this down into its factorial form. So that's why we're going through that today. So here we have it. Let's look at a few examples that build it up to use everything within here. And we'll go from there. So first example, I've already kind of gone through this, but four factorial just means four times three times two times one. And then you just need to work this out. You can use the button in your calculator or you can work it out by doing, you know, four times three is 12 multiplied by two is 24. Okay, obviously as the number gets bigger, it's much easier to use the button in your calculator. Now, this is four choose two. Okay, now for me to do this, what I need to do is first set it out. So we get four C two, and this is gonna be four factorial on the top. Then I have R factorial, which is two factorial, and then N minus R is going to give me my next one so that's also two factorial what you'll notice is that these two values will always add up to this value here now if i expand this again i can use my calculator to do this but i'm going to expand it manually so that you can see what we're doing and here i would just probably start off by cancelling uh two twos is four that's probably the easiest way. And then we've got three times two on the top, which is six. And then the rest is ones which don't change my, the value of my answer. If I see it in this form, it means it's five choose three is what I'm looking at. So it's five factorial on top, three factorial on bottom here. And then the other one is the value that will make it up to that top number. That's the easiest way to think about it. These two will always total that one. So we've got now five times four times three times two times one. And then we've got three times two times one times two times one. Okay, and I can cancel the twos here and cancel this three, cancel this two with two in the four there. And now you can see it just leaves me with 10 in total. Now, what I've got here is the way I would do it if I was doing it without a calculator. But there is an alternative, and I can just use that button in the calculator, um, which I did mention that we would look at more next time. But we'll just put it in here. So if you look at that button, that button in the calculator is shift and then the divide sign. Okay, so if I wanted to do, you know, this problem, I would just press five, shift, the divide sign, three, and then equals. And you should see your five C three pop up in the calculator. The C will be quite a, a thicker C on most of the calculators, you'll notice that, and it will give you the answer of 10, okay? So if you did it without a calculator, you would just expand it like so. If you're doing it with a calculator, then you could use this button and get the answer quicker. Now, you're probably thinking, well, what's the point of learning this method if I can just use a calculator to get the answer quickly? Well. In some ways, you're right. The way we do it like this in the calculator, we'll do it a lot, like probably 95% of the time. However, there are cases when you're gonna to need to do it this way. And these cases will be where we're dealing with unknowns, where some of these values we might not know. So those kind of, they usually come up as part of a question in an exam. So that is why you do need to know it. So it's, you should practice with both but 95% of the time you'll use just the calculator method. I'll pop up a few questions for you to have a go and I'll put the answers at the end as always. 
Um, stay tuned for the next video. The next video is where we start to look at the binomial expansion in a bit more detail and that'll be the kind of the video that you'll really need to get stuck into these questions. So the next video or two will be the ones that you probably need the most for this unit.